The U.S. presidential election is getting closer and has gained much attention around the globe. I talked to the charge d'affaires of the U.S. Embassy and consulates in Indonesia, Brian McFeeters, to find out how the upcoming election will affect strategic policies for both countries. Well, of course, we don't know what the results of the election will be. That's up to the voters. But as far as U.S.-Indonesia is, is concerned and as far as you know, general foreign policy, there's a lot of continuity. In terms of Indonesia, which is my specialty, um, yeah. we have a strategic partnership concentrating on a number of areas, uh, economics, defense, education, and we would expect those to continue uh, based on the agreement that President Jokowi and President Obama signed last year. Okay. We still remember that uh, President Jokowi visited the United States right. last year, uh, the February 15 to 16. Do you see uh, the concrete cooperation between the United States and Indonesia, especially in terms of economic cooperation for small and medium enterprises, entrepreneurship, and also the development of the digital economy? Right. We have a strong existing economic uh, partnership. Primarily, it's based on the existing U.S. companies that are here. We have about a total of 65 billion in U.S. existing investment here, mainly in the mining and extractive sectors. And that accounts for about 100,000 jobs, so they're a major contributor. And we also hear from those U.S. businesses that they're willing to invest as much as 60 billion more, so almost double the amount. The thing is they're looking for uh, certain conditions in the economy, sort of certainty of the rules, openness for investment, some things that President Jokowi has already started, so they're, they're interested in seeing that continue. In terms of the uh, digital economy, yeah. creative economy, that's another area of focus. We had a number of Indonesian entrepreneurs participate in, uh, in a global entrepreneurship summit yeah. with President Obama last uh, May or June. So we have an ongoing uh, cooperation on the creative economy as well. Okay, about the uh, upcoming election, can you please explain to us in brief what, uh, how does the U.S. election work? Uh, because since it is a lot more complicated than how the president gets elected around the world. I guess it's different. Uh, one difference from Indonesia is it's, it's, uh, it's not precisely one man, one vote, or one person, one vote. Yeah. In the United States, we have an electoral college. Uh, to, to, to simplify it, it basically means like each state has a certain number of representatives, and you elect, the, the voters elect elector, the electoral college, and then the electoral college picks a president. Hmm. The reason, the historical reason for that is we want to have balance of the states so that if we didn't have that, you could have large population states that would determine the, all the presidential elections and the small states wouldn't have any voice. So it's a way of balancing the influence. Okay, if you talk about the U.S. elections, everybody talks about it. Any media, if you watch TV, they talk about the U.S. election. Uh, what do you think? Why do you think the presidential election this year is more controversial compared to the previous one? Right, I think we're all, you know, we're all reading the same news and seeing, uh, seeing those stories. There is a lot of... Uh, a lot of anxiety in the United States. There were the big economic uh, crisis in 2008, and yeah. some people feel that they've never recovered from that, so there's anxiety about that. There's a lot of anxiety about globalization and what does it mean for different people. So we do, you know, as, as somebody who's uh, been following U.S. elections and, and voting for years myself, I do, I do agree with you. There's a lot of uh, kind of unprecedented uh, high-level rhetoric this time. At the same point, at the same time, you know, we will see the same kind of orderly presidential election that we've always seen and there will be a clear transfer of power to the new president so the system will continue to function. And how about the two candidates? Is it one of the factors to it is being talked about around the world? I mean that's not really my that's not really my area of specialty. I guess I'm reading the same news that everybody mm. else is but uh, in terms of us in Indonesia you know we see continuity in the strategic partnership mm. the uh, the areas that we work on education people-to-people -people ties defense cooperation global challenges those are all areas that, that have large bipartisan support of both the Democratic and Republican Party, so we don't expect a lot of change there in terms of what we do here. Okay, of all the fields that you've been mentioning, is there any, uh, some of uh, the fields that become the priority for the relationship between the United States and Indonesia? The, the, uh, the, the, I think the priorities are the, are the areas that our presidents set out when they met. Uh, the, the, you're right, they met in February of this year, yeah. but they also met in October last year bilaterally. And at that, at that time, they agreed to upgrade our cooperation from a, uh, to, a, to a strategic partnership, so raising the level of the partnership. Mm -hmm. And they set out uh, five areas that we continue to work on. That is yeah. uh, people to people, including education. We're trying to get more Indonesian students to go to the U.S. and have more American students come to, the, to, come to Indonesia. Uh, and then we have economic ties, including the ones I mentioned, the existing investors, but also 
uh, a large willingness to work on renewable energy, which is an area of strength for the United States, geothermal and wind power and things like that. And then thirdly, we have defense cooperation that's very active. I just got back from uh, witnessing the Pacific Partnership, which is a, yeah. an exercise between 1,000 military personnel on both sides in Padang, mm. working on, on medical and civil, uh, civil issues such as disaster assistance. Uh, then, in addition, we s strongly support President Jokowi's emphasis on maritime mm. policy. So we're working on things like maritime mm. domain awareness, which is knowing who's out there in your ocean and what they're doing, and also on the environmental aspects, protecting Indonesia biodiversity, the, mm. the, the unprecedented, the, you know, the amount of biodiversity you have here. And then the last area, and this is very important, is global cooperation on things like counterterrorism and climate mm. change. In the United States, we increasingly value Indonesia as a global partner, you know, member of the G20, big player in the region, big player globally. So you see more and more attention to Indonesia from Washington policymakers based on its, not only its regional importance, but its global role. Okay, terrorism has one of the biggest threats the world faces nowadays. What do you think that both countries uh, can play? What kind of role does the both countries can play in combating terrorism? It's a high priority for both of us. There's existing cooperation between our law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. Uh, it's, I think it's been effective. Indonesia is seen as having very effective prevention and reaction to terrorism. It's a, it's a challenge that we all, we all face. You know, there's danger of lone wolf attacks in both of our yeah. countries, so it's something that we're continuing to pay attention to as much as we can. Okay. One of the most interesting uh, things uh, on his visit, Jokowi, is also visiting Global Technology Center, Silicon mm. Valley, and right. meeting with some executive officers of information technology giants. Is there any way we can cooperate in this field? Right, and there's, I think there's already a lot going on. You know, major mm -hmm. U.S. companies uh, have a presence here and are very interested. Uh, you know, Google, Facebook, uh, <coughs> Indonesia is seen as one of the biggest Twitter users, uh, one of the biggest tweet generators in the world. Yeah. Uh, one one uh, company that maybe uh, doesn't come to mind, but Disney, for example. Disney is interested mm -hmm. in recruiting creative talent from Indonesia. So there's a lot of interest in, uh, in Indonesian talent. I understand there's a lot of Indonesians already working in Silicon Valley, so you already have a presence there. Okay. How about uh, the defense relationship? You mentioned a couple of right. times about the uh, defense relationship between two countries. What is, how concrete the relationship? Are? It's very, it's very well developed. Um, over, the past, uh, over the past year, there have been uh, uh, something like 500 Indonesian military personnel going to the United States for some kind of training or, or expert, you know, expert cooperation. Mm -hmm. So we have a constant flow back and forth. I just mentioned the Pacific Partnership was a big exercise in, mm -hmm. uh, in Padang. But at the same time, we have other exercises going around on the uh, other parts of the country. In November, for example, we're going to have a joint uh, fighter exercise where, the, where pilots from both countries fly maneuvering together with the high-tech aircraft. So it's, a, it's a, very, a very deep and valuable partnership for both of us. Mr. McFeeder said that whoever wins the U.S. election, bilateral relations between the U.S. and Indonesia will remain the same and even broaden in the future, including in the military, education, and commerce.